Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning as we celebrate the Festival of the Holy Trinity. We have just a few announcements before we get started. Our congregation's discernment team continues its work of reviewing and compiling information we've received from many different agencies and organizations. This is a large amount of guidance and a large number of recommendations, and so I appreciate your patience and your understanding as we navigate these uncharted waters together. Additionally, I wish to remind you that St. James has never been closed. Our ministry is ongoing. Our support of our community is ongoing. We ask for your continuing prayers and financial support so that we may continue to be the hands and voice of Jesus in our world. During today's first reading from Genesis, you will see artwork depicting the creation story. These are the handiwork of Julia Dell Otterness and are used with her permission. Julia operates Genesis 1-1 Fine Art. She and her husband are global missionaries. You can find her art on the internet at www.genesis.com. 1-1-A-R-T.O-R-G. That's www.genesis1-1art.org. We give thanks for her gift this morning. This morning we are blessed to welcome our synod leaders in our worship, and we welcome our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, as she brings us today's message. You can follow along with today's worship using the electronic bulletin found in the description below. And now, let us worship the risen Lord together. Dear siblings in Christ, grace and peace be to you as we gather on this Holy Trinity Sunday for worship across our synod and across our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, blessed by a sermon that has been prepared by our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, to be shared across this church on this Holy Trinity Sunday, a day when we think about our unity in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sanctifier, how we come together as expressions of God's grace and care for all of creation through our church and our ministries and our individual walk of faith. I'm glad that you're able to be a part of this worship service. We pray that it will be a blessing in your life and in your congregation's life. Here in our Sierra Pacific Synod, we're very thankful for the work and the leadership of the crew, the production crew for worship at St. Matthew Lutheran Church, which has provided assistance in bringing this service to you. I also want to acknowledge and thank Pastor Katie Grinberg and Pastor Tito Valeriano from our Synod staff who worked to create this service of the word for years in your ministry. We also have a, a, a number of our synod staff who will be helping to lead the service today as well. We pray that this will be a time of blessing for us as we continue to wonder what it means to be a church in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, as we think about what it means to be sheltered in place and yet called to serve as we are able. May you be blessed in all things as we worship together today. In the name of Christ, amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, holy and gracious God, for you created the waters of the earth, wide oceans, rushing streams, clear lakes, mighty weavers. You led your people through the sea and called them to life in covenant with you. Your son was baptized in the river Jordan to begin his mission among us. You pour out your Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth. Through this water, remind us of the gift of baptism. Renew us in your promise so that we may serve this world in all its need. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus, we
The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Trinity of love, deposing the powers of hate and isolation, gathering creation in bonds of mutual care. Through the waters of baptism, may our relatedness be reborn in justice, mercy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, who is with us always. Amen. This morning's first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 4, A. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle, and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families 
and to God. Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work rooted the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion 
still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed, handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many, black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam, the breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit, the breath crushed out of George Floyd, the breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, Anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country. But we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together, in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen.
confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation and humble in our service. God, triune and holy, receive our prayer. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals. Call them good and work for their renewal and preservation. God, triune and holy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities, like Chief Seattle, whom we commemorate today, and all who work for justice in and with Native communities. God, triune and holy, receive our prayer. God of justice, you created us in your image. Help us see your likeness in all people. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Open our ears to hear their cries for justice. Break open our hearts to act for justice for all your people. God, triune and holy, receive, receive our, our prayer. God of healing, be with those who provide care for others and those who support their work. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially those people, places, and needs we name now. God, triune and holy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection be especially with those who cannot be with their loved ones who are sick and dying. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in, all, and in our lives. God, triune and holy, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your beloved child. 
Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, praying in the language of our own hearts. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We go now through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Amen. Do Beloved in Christ, you have been called to be disciples of Jesus. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Christ, giving thanks to God. Go in peace to love and serve God. Do-